at that. That's 1914. Ran in the Indianapolis 500. You believe that? That's brave. On bricks. Yeah, on bricks. On bricks. Yeah. Come a long way. Oh, yeah. From that. I haven't looked, but I doubt there's a seatbelt. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> or it's not very good on Not very good, yeah. Either. Piece of cloth. Yeah. How does it feel like running a historic race like that? To be here, you know, I've, I've been to this track many times, and there is a energy when you pull in and drive through the tunnel and pull in the track. And I've, I've felt very fortunate to experience it. NASCAR and the Brickyard 400 is, you know, one of the biggest races in NASCAR. So I, I feel very fortunate to have experienced experienced it, but I, I have come to realize, especially after attending last year's Indy 500, that there's another level, next level. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, as a fan last year in, in worked in the booth with NBC, experienced it and left here thinking, I have to do this. Like, I know I didn't think I wanted to do it, it but I, I have to do it. And I went, went to work and better understood the safety. And, and then of course, once I got comfortable with the safety of the car, I started testing on ovals and a lot of things had to happen after that. But I am so excited to stand on the front straightaway here back home again in Indiana, you know, drivers start your engines, like that moment, and to be able to live it firsthand in comparison to all the years as a fan watching it. Um, I, I can't believe that moment's gonna happen. Yeah, the fanfare and everything that comes with it, you've never experienced as a driver, and you, you've, you've kind of previewed what that's gonna be like, but what do you think that moment will actually be like standing on the grid come race day? The front straightaway of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is the most intimate part of any racetrack that I've experienced. I mean, you have fans, on. Um, both sides, it's like a tunnel on the front stretch, and you can hear anyone. I mean, anyone can get your attention if they want to. I mean, it's it's everything is that close and compressed. So, to have a full house here, um, and to, I've never seen three hundred plus thousand people in one place. So, uh, I think it's just going to be insane. What's your earliest memory of the Indianapolis Five Hundred? I can't remember the year, but my grandfather, uh, my dad's father, was a huge AJ Foyt fan. And I remember him pulling me onto the couch. Uh, they would stop through Southern California and visit us. They were retired and had a home in Arizona and would drive from Arizona up the coast fishing all the way to Canada and then return uh, in the winter. And as they would pass through town on their way north, they would, they would stop. And you know, in May, I remember my grandfather being at our house and just pulling me in like, you know, that Foyt. You, you want to know what a man's like, that A.J. Foyt, he's a man. So and that's like one of my first memories. And I, I feel like it was the year A.J. jumped out of his car and started hammering on the, uh, the right front suspension with a hammer. It, it was either that year or maybe they were showing a highlight of it, but I, I remember him pointing that out to me and just thinking, you know, A.J. Foyt's the man.